Los aguacates. Avocados. Esperanza's breath made smoky vapors in front of her face as she waited for the truck to take her to tie grapevines. She shifted from foot to foot and clapped her gloved hands together and wondered what was so new about the new year. It already seemed old with the same routines. She worked during the week, she helped Hortensia cook dinner in the late afternoons, and in the evening she helped Josefina with the babies and Isabel with her homework. She wanted to see mamas on Saturdays and Sundays. She huddled in the field near a smudge pot to keep warm and mentally counted the money she would need to bring Abuelita here. Every other week, with small amounts she saved, she bought a money order from the market and put it in her valise. She figured that if she kept working till, until the peaches, she would have enough for Abuelita's travel. Her problem would then be how to reach Abuelita. The men went down the rows first, pruning the thick gra grapevines and leaving a few long branches or canes on each trunk. She followed along with the others and tied the canes on a taut wire that was stretched post to post. She ached from the cold and had to keep moving all day long to stay warm. That night, she soaked her hands in warm water and she realized that she no longer recognized them as her own. Cut and scarred, swollen and stiff, they looked like the hands of a very old man. Are you sure this will work? asked Esperanza as she watched Hortensia cut a ripe avocado in half. Of course, said Hortensia, removing the big pit and leaving a hole in the heart of the fruit. She scooped out the pulp, mashed it on a plate, and added some glycerin. You have seen me make this for your mother many times. We are lucky to have avocados this time of year. Some friends of Josefina brought them from Los Angeles. Hortensia rubbed the avocado mixture into Esperanza's hands. You must keep it on for 20 minutes so your hands will soak up the oils. Esperanza looked at her hands covered in greasy green lotion and remembered when Mama used to sit like this after a long day of gardening or after horseback rides with Papa through the dry, dry mesquite grasslands. When she was a little girl, she had, she had laughed at Mama's hands covered in what looked like guacamole, but she had loved for her to rinse them because afterwards Esperanza would take Mama's hands into the palms of her own face so that she could feel their suppleness and breathe in the fresh smell. Esperanza was surprised at the simple things she missed about Mama. She missed her way of walking into her room, graceful and regal. She missed watching her hands watching her hands crocheting, her fingers moving nimbly, and most of all, she longed for the sound of Mama's strong and assured laughter. She put her hands under the faucet, rinsed off the avocado, and patted them dry. They felt better, but still looked red and weathered. She took another avocado, cut it in half, and swung the knife into the pit and pulled it from the flesh. She repeated Hortensia's recipe and she sat for the second time with her hands smothered. She realized that it wouldn't matter how much avocado and glycerin she put on them. They would never look like the hands of a wealthy woman from El Rancho de las Rosas because they were the hands of a poor campesino. It was at the end of great time when the doctor stopped Esperanza and Miguel in the hallway of the hospital before they could reach mama's room. I asked the nurses to alert me when they saw you coming. I'm sorry to tell you that your mother has pneumonia. How can that be? said Esperanza, her hands beginning to shake as she stared at the doctor. I thought she was getting better. This disease, valley fever, makes the body tired and susceptible to other infections. We are treating her with medications. She is weak. I know this is hard for you, but we would ask that she have no visitors for at least a month, maybe longer. We can't take a chance that she will contract another infection from any outside germs that might be brought into the hospital. Can I see her just for a few minute, moments? The doctor hesitated, then nodded and walked away. Esperanza hurried to Mama's bed and Miguel followed. Esperanza couldn't imagine not seeing her for so many weeks. Mama, said Esperanza. Mama slowly opened her eyes and gave Esperanza the smi smallest smile. She was thin and frail. Her hair was strewn and bed ragged. All of her, her face and her face was so white that it seemed to fade into the sheets as if she would sink into the bed and disappear forever. Mama looked like a ghost of herself. The doctor said I can't come visit for a while. Mama nodded, her eyelids slowly falling back down as if it had been a burden to keep them up. Esperanza felt Miguel's hand on her shoulder. Anza, we should go, he said. But Esperanza would not move. She wanted to do something for Mama and to help make her feel better. She noticed the brush and hairpins on the bedside table. She carefully rolled Mama on her side and gathered all of her hair together. She brushed it and plaited it into a long braid. 
Wrapping it around Mama's head, she gently pinned it into place. Then she helped Mama lie on her back, her hair now framing her face against, face against the white linens, like a braided halo, like she used to wear in Aguas Calientes. Esperanza bent down close to Mama's ear. Don't worry, Mama. Remember, I, I will still take care of everything. I am working and I can pay the bills. I love you. Mama said softly, I love you too. And Esperanza turned to leave. And as Esperanza turned to leave, she heard Mama whisper, no matter what happens.